is time to get a move on. We're running late and we've got speed bumps, which means... It's a slow journey with speed bumps. Well, I'm starting it now. Oh, morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> the time's eight o'clock and we're getting our cars ready down to head into Monaco to meet up with the rest of the supercars. And I'll show you something really cool. We managed to get all of the bags, two relatively big sized suitcases, one there, one there, and a rucksack. <clears throat> so we're all ready to go. We've got six days on the road and it is going to be an insane trip. So I'm really looking forward to this trip. There's going to be tons of supercars, tons of action and tons of noise. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll just try and update you as much as possible. But it's so early that at the moment I don't feel like a long drive. So I don't need to uh, listen to the briefing, the driver briefing. I'm just going to film all of the cars that are here because these are what is going to join us back to England. So we had a week in Monaco of tons and tons of supercars driving around, beautiful colours, and now we've got a pit, like basically our own selection of cars. Lamborghinis, McLarens, Porsche, Ferrari, Audi, BMW, and an Alfa Romeo, and a Lotus.
first break of the day and the colours are out, the skittles are out. And the first fuel stop, culprit victim. And we've got a lovely scenery view here. And what a first drive. Nothing can really compare to what I have just experienced and I kind of understand what people say when you can't drive or get the best out of supercars when you drive in central London because what we've just had there um, is definitely a lot more fun than you have when you drive around central London. Jesus. stop the first fuel stop was this car then some of the guys filled up just before lunch and now this is the third one with the majority of the other cars filling up however my car has still got over 200 miles left in the tank I think the Lambo still has quite a lot of fuel he's just filling up for the sake of it however my car I think will be able to get to Grenoble which is our first stop in one tank and if that's the case then my car wins.
Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two of Supercars of London in Europe with the return Schmied Tour, seen through glass, Seb Delaney and a whole host of other supercars and we are headed to Lake Como today which I'm really excited about, I've never been before but I've heard that it's stunning and the route that we're taking is through Switzerland and down into Northern Italy um, so I'm really looking forward to the mountain roads and just everything from today and we're going to film as much as possible, as much as our battery and memory lets us and at the moment, we are trying to navigate out of the car park. So refuel number one, we have gone from Monaco up to Grenoble, a very mountainy and not fuel efficient way. And I got to Grenoble at just under half a tank whilst everyone else had filled up twice I think. So most people had done two and a half tanks. I had just about done half. And we've got about an hour into our journey across to Lake Como and now I'm having to refuel. So GAD tuning, amazing. <laughs> So what's up? We made it to Switzerland and what a stunning view that we have here. We've just been uh, going up and down this hairpin with all of the other supercars and I think some of them are going to be doing single runs now. Definitely not practicing their drifting but just lots and lots of colours and supercars and a stunning road here. And an Opel Zafira. But this beats any car. out here in the Swiss Alps and there is not much wildlife to be seen. I'm doing a bit of a nature documentary because this is just absolutely stunning. By the way, that was my best impression of David Attenborough. Absolutely rubbish. Down there, I have no idea what it is. Looks like, like some sort of the world's worst prison to be in as this is what is around. And the cars are great. The cars are great, but when you have this, you just have to stop and take pictures of the cars in the view. And Sam vlogging. <laughs>
For the last two hours we've been in Switzerland driving very, very conservatively because we know that we're not welcome in Switzerland. We were all very excited for the first two minutes of arriving in Italy until we get to these roads. Everyone's bottoming, bottoming out in their cars and um, it's not a lot of fun. There was a lot of fist pumping when we arrived in Italy but not so much now. Lots of roadworks. We are in Lake Como and we're going to be driving from Lake Como up into Austria. And the drive is apparently a lot shorter and also a bit of a cruise as opposed to yesterday and the day before, which was in a full on full throttle hoon. I felt like I was in Need for Speed or Fast and the Furious or something like that. So it's 10 o'clock and we were asked to be by our cars by 10 o'clock. I've just spotted Seb Delaney up in his balcony, not checking out. I think he's vlogging me. Not entirely too sure, but this is the hotel that we've stayed at. And um, yeah, he's supposed to be out in the car and he's just um, chilling out on his balcony, which is very typical him.
So we're stopping at a pass. We've just had a lot of fun up a lot of hairpins. And I've now decided that with the mountain range behind us, there's a perfect view for me to go down on my feet because it's boiling hot and there's a quattro system on my R8. There's no way that I'm going sideways. So I'm gonna go on my feet and film them all go back down and then back up and try and get some really cool action because this road is epic. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Supercars of London in Austria. I'm getting, uh, I'm losing track of all of the countries that we're going to. I think we went through four Not yesterday. Move. We are in group numero uno with the 4C and with the Ferrari 458 Speciale behind. And the reason we are in group number one for this section of the trip is because me and Sam want to be sitting right at the front when all of the um, guys with balls, Lamborghinis, and there's Sam saying the next group are already on their way. Going back to the reason why we're in number one is because we want to catch the Lamborghinis, the McLarens, the Porsches, all of those cars just flat out just to uh, really get a glimpse of how fast these cars look when they're going super speeds. What an insane thrill going on the Autobahn at 165, 170 miles an hour in this car. I can't believe how quick it is to get to that sort of speed. The last time, the last spurt that me and Sam had, we were, I was in sixth gear doing 100, 110, I just put my foot down and it just built up so quickly. And your palms get sweaty, you start shaking, but you just have to look so far ahead. Thank God I've watched so many Top Gear episodes and listen to their advices of uh, you just have to keep looking 100, 200 meters ahead and make sure that the traffic, the road, everything is in your favor so that you can push. And we've just got cars flying past now because me and Sam have pushed on a little bit. Um, and then obviously we saw that caravan on fire, which... Um,
first stint on the autobahn is complete. We're now turning off of one of the roads in Germany. According to my satellite navigation system, we are four minutes away from Motorworld. And I really don't know what to expect because I've never been to Motorworld before. I don't really know what it is. I've just heard that there's a few supercar dealerships and things like that and we're going to have some lunch. And um, I've been disappointed as well with the sort of cars that I've seen on the Autobahn. Not that many, a few Porsches and a Jaguar F-Type. And a big sign there for the Mercedes S-Class Coupe. arriving very very soon. Now turn right. We've made it to Motorworld. So we're just gonna film whatever the hell this is. At the moment it's a glass building. And a few nice cars dashed around. Most of them are from our convoy. There's the orange McLaren over there. Um, the Hurricane just left. And, uh, yeah. Not much else going on, but we're gonna see what, what's going on inside here. Can't see much at the moment because the glass is reflective. Let's take a quick walk around the Ferrari and Maserati dealer, which is banned from England now. I don't think you're allowed to have a Ferrari and Maserati on the same building. Something that Ferrari have uh, implemented in the recent times. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Ferrari. We've got a 458 Spider. We've got a Ferrari 599 GTO in here. Hopefully the reflection isn't too bad and I can show you. We've also got a LaFerrari in here. Well, half of a LaFerrari. So there's the GTO. And then in here, I'm gonna zoom in because I don't think you're allowed to film it. It's the LaFerrari. An FF. 458 Spider, F12, some amazing orange SL over there, which is uh, pretty cool. And then a black Scuderia, which Sam has beat me to. So this is Ferrari, and then we're gonna head straight over to Lamborghini, because everything else here is not of interest. I'm only joking, I'll film as much as I can for you, because I know that it's not all about Ferrari and Lamborghini. It's a C63 with square pipes. I was just about to ask the viewers, what exhaust system it is, but then the exhaust system tells me itself. Akrapovic. I wonder how that sounds. Probably quite beast. I'm walking across the road now. We just saw a green hurricane come down this road whilst um, we were eating. So I didn't film it, unfortunately. And this is Motorworld. I know I don't like the black stripe. The roof looks, poo, really. the roof looks bad. Do you want me to open it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the nose lift is up. This is not how you leave your Mercia Lago. It looks stunning because it's orange, but I don't like the uh, I don't like the black. Good number plate, and it's been to the Nurburgring. But I'm unsure. I don't think I'm going to take a picture of it because the nose lift is up as well, which looks awful. Lamborghini Stuttgart. We've got a matte white performant here, and then some Lambos here. Ooh, LP640. A white one. Don't know whether I'm allowed to film that. This is the perfect colour, just without the orange bits. Oh, without the black bits. This is the perfect colour. I don't, I'm not sure about all of these orange bits and stuff. Just getting interrupted on all of my videos. Oh, what? Is this a Balboni? This is like a Balboni to me. Is it manual? Oh, it's an e-gear Balboni. Seriously cool. With a Superleggera and loads of cars in boxes. 
I didn't film them. There's an Enzo. There's someone blocking the way. Lamborghini out there. Seems to be Lamborghinis everywhere. Ah, yeah, someone driving it. Ooh. It's a better view. I've managed to find a good view of the LP640. I don't know there's an Aventador, but this is what it's all about. Yes. When someone told me I'd be driving on the Autobahn today, this is not what I had in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supercars of London in Cologne today. And um, we're doing something slightly different to everyone else that is here behind. We've got a few cool cars here. And the, the day is supposed to be spring event, but we're leaving extra early because there are the rumors that Lamborghini Dusseldorf has a Venino Roaster, a Lamborghini Venino Roaster. I've, no, I've never seen one, Sam's never seen one, Seb's never seen one. So we're heading there right away and we're gonna try and catch a Venino Roaster in a showroom. I never go to showrooms to see supercars because I just think I could probably just see them on the road because of London we're so lucky with the supercars. But a Venino Roadster is slightly different. So we're gonna head in the car, check out the Venino Roadster and then head on to spring event. The weather is atrocious outside. So there's not much action gonna be going on at spring event, which is um, a real shame. But fingers crossed that today is good and we get some good videos. For the entire trip so far, we've had beautiful sun, so it was only right that the closer to England we get, the worse the weather gets. We're in Germany now, and this is what we're dealing with. And today is the day of the big sort of car show that we were all hoping to attend and, and do the drift. There's drifting, there's a circuit, there's a drag strip. There just seems to be everything. There's a new TT there. And I'm not entirely too sure what is going to be in store for us when we get there, what cars are gonna be there, what cars are gonna be happy to do anything on the racetrack. But fingers crossed we still get a good day, some good videos, and of course we get to see this Lamborghini Venino Roadster. We're about 15 minutes away from the center of Dusseldorf where this Lamborghini showroom is and I'm starting to get really excited. The weather is atrocious. I'm not even going to talk about that apart from the fact that it's just raining and the visibility is awful. But I'm really excited to see a Venino. The amount of times that I talk to friends about this car and how much of a showstopper it is, it's insane. I mean, yes, there's the LaFerrari, the 918, the P1 and things like that, but they're actually so common compared to the Venino. I don't think one has been to the UK yet. And this is the only opportunity since they launched it in Geneva a couple of years ago, at the same time that they launched the LaFerrari. I think that's correct. Lamborghini wanted to steal the Ferrari's limelight. There's not been an opportunity to see one, so the fact that we were supposed to be driving around Dusseldorf to head on to spring event, me, Sam, and Seb decided that, nah, we are gonna go and see this Venino regardless of whether it's in a showroom or not. Apparently the rumor is that it's leaving today. So this video could be the most epic fail of all time. And if that's the case, then I'm gonna be really down hard. I might just drive back to the hotel and sleep. I won't, but that's what I'll feel like doing. Um, so we've got less than 10 minutes to go until I could potentially see my first Venino. And it's dark red and it's a roadster is just um, quite ridiculous and I think if I won the lottery I would just I'd have to buy a Venino the amount of times we talk about it giving a thumbs up to Sam as I drive past him the Venino is just it's a bit of a bit of a poster poster car really just insane we've always dreamt of having one come to London for the summer or something from of the Arab countries, but not yet. This looks like the truck that's arrived to pick up. Oh my god, that Benino is insane! I'm getting too excited. There. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> We're all getting excited here. Let's go in. Yeah. I, I think you go here. 
This is just utterly ridiculous. This is like, it makes me laugh. Yeah, this is just a laughable car. I think this. <laughs> this. This is much more new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see what you look like in an LP640. Ah. International, and let's go car shopping. Hey, it looks the car. Do you feel at home? This feels big. Mm. Just doing it. What an insane experience. I cannot believe the timing, the luck, and the fact that we saw a Vanina Roaster actually driving, start up and driving. I'm in a tunnel, I'm not doing anything. We're cruising, the weather's still horrific, and we're heading on to spring break. Insane car, and they also had um, walking talkies. They also had an LP640 there that was like really, really cool to see. Left hand drive, Sam's talking to me on a walking talkie. So, yes, I'm absolutely shattered of about five, six hours sleep last night. Excitement has just gone to a peak, and now it's coming back down slowly. So, I'm becoming very, very tired and lethargic. If that to spring event now so uh, the camera will be rolling a little bit more when we get there to try and catch some cars in action but it's still raining so Okay. The airport. Oh, okay. Yes. So you just live here? You live here? Yeah, no, not really. No. Kind of like 150 kilometers away. Okay. The north. Oh, so you've come far? Yeah. Yeah. Very far. Well, I better. Okay. See so you. Yeah. See you in there. Yeah. Hi. Good how day. are you doing? How are you? Good to meet.
So we've arrived at Spring Event and I'm so tired. <laughs> All four hours sleep, Sarah's just laughing at me. We've got some cars behind. Um, we're getting ready to go onto the track. The UK car. A few AMG GTs, Hurricane. Um, and some Nissan GTRs, 458s. Yeah. There's a Mercer Lago over here, which is just a 6.2. California. GT3. And then my car. I hope no one hits my car. Look at that, there's a GTR over there that's in a very, very similar shade to mine. Very similar shade. A lot of people that follow me on the motorway on this trip are saying that my car blends in with the tarmac. Is it invisible? Is there a car there? Or is it just a floating number plate? Let me know. We've got a blue chrome GTR. And there's a hurricane. And the problem inside is that there's music playing, so... Of a rev war between a speciale aperta and a hurricane and we're in the middle of nowhere really and i think these cars are just ready to go onto track and i might get some sounds but the rain is horrible might not be able to show up too much but it's not that good and tomorrow's supposed to be worse Going the wrong way. Epic fail. The highlight is definitely the C63 alarm. It's the best ruining our videos. So we're back in the car. It's just a bad combination, I think, of being absolutely shattered, having done two weeks on the road, and spring event, all of the cars are on a track, but you can't see the track, really. You can just see the sort of uh, pit lane or whatever. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna leave and head back to the hotel, chill out, edit, and uh, get back to sort of normality, I think. Good morning, Sunday morning in Germany, Cologne. We are gonna be heading out a day early than planned and I'll explain all in the car, but the weather's not that great. Nürburgring was shut yesterday and basically I've explained the whole thing right now. We are heading over to the car, packing it up and driving through Germany, Belgium and France to Calais to get our Euro tunnel to head back to England, which is gonna be a nice sort of, uh, it's just exciting really to get back onto the English soil. And we've got a few cars over here. Sam see through glasses uh, joining us on our voyage back. We've got an Aston Martin which uh, has joined us yesterday but we haven't heard or seen. Sam in his uh, 4C, Johnny in his 12C. The baby blue Porsche which is very, very nice. I think that's it. Ah, oh, there's Tim in his McLaren box right behind mine. Time to get a move on. It's the final fuel stop. There's Sam. And uh, my car has been absolutely insane on fuel. I'm going to be doing a review of like how good my car has been on fuel. I'm not even filling up. I've got over three quarters of a tank. I'm just making sure that I'm full to the brim for this trip. But it's just been insane. Like I've just been pushing it and pushing it on the autobahns and hasn't really been using any fuel. So 
We've got well over 400 miles left on the fuel range. And there you go, 20 litres. But I'm just going to push it up right to the brim, maybe 25 litres or whatever. It's absolutely nothing. Especially because this is a huge tank, 85 litres, so I've used barely anything. I left Cologne and I've decided to do a fuel challenge because I've got sand behind me. We've got plenty of time. It's telling us that we've got about four hours to drive until we hit Calais. And I've got a full tank. It's 255 miles to Calais. And then we've obviously got the Euro Tunnel across and then it's some miles until we get back home. I have no idea. But I've got a full tank and we're just cruising. The autobahns are completely clear, but we're restricted to 120 kilometers an hour at the moment, which is just under 80, which is about 75. So I'm just gonna like see how far this fuel is gonna take me. And I know that it's gonna get me home, but I just wanna show you guys how even, like I will push on when, it's, when it starts getting de-restricted just for the fun of it. And I'll show you just how good my car is on fuel. We're gonna work out how much fuel we've used when we get back to London. I'm gonna wrap up this whole movie, YouTube, Bonanza, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna sort of give you the full summary of how good this car is, how many miles we covered, how much fuel we put in, how much money we spent on fuel as well. That's probably quite an interesting one because the Euro and the pound um, is so different at the moment. Um, but at the moment, we're restricted to 120 miles an hour, so there's not much to report on, apart from the fact that I have 385 miles of fuel. See you in a bit. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why I do not use the Audi sat-nav. We're on the autobahn, not according to my sat-nav. It is also telling me that I'm off-road. Obviously, I'm in a massive field here with woods to the right. There are woods to the right to be fair, it's got that right, but it is not correct. And that's not even the road that we're on either, that's a B road. And we're on the motorway. Comical Audi. Greetings from Belgium. I forgot to do an update through the Netherlands, but we were there for about 20, 25 minutes. Sam's still behind me. We've now just passed across into Belgium and we are being very respectful of the speed limit and sticking to 120 kilometers an hour, which is um, 75 miles an hour, I think I said. And I've realized that I haven't fully charged my camera last night because I didn't know what I was doing today, which is an epic fail. So I'm hoping that Belgium is seriously boring. All I know is it's like really bad for traffic. They're one of the worst countries in Europe for traffic. But because it's a Sunday morning, time is only 10 to 9 in the morning so we're just carving our way through the uh, countryside the motorways with little traffic at all our ETA is half past 11 which is an hour and 20 minutes before our shuttle Eurostar not Eurostar, Eurotunnel across into England we're going to get overtaken by a Dacia or a Dacia whatever they pronounce it Look at it, the Dacia Logi has overtaken us as we're cruising through Belgium. And we're cruising at the speed limit, we don't want to break the speed limit, so they're obviously shaking their steering wheel, the handling's all over the place. I don't even know how much that car costs. If you know how much that car costs, please let me know in the comment box below. But I feel insulted that the R8 has been overtaken by that car. The Logi, what a beast. Sam's fuel economy is obviously going well. <laughs> obviously not going that well. He's not overtaking me. But we do have a lovely stretch in front of us. our fuel economy so far we have not got left long left to go less than an hour and uh, so far my car has been smashing it we haven't even used a quarter of a tank to get to Calais and we've had some signs but that isn't one of them I'm not sure how many kilometers it is to Calais 
it's telling me 60 miles and we're traveling at 70, 75 miles an hour. So uh, work it out amongst yourselves how long we've got left. There's the 4C behind. We've made it onto the Channel Tunnel. And now, the moment of truth. Ah. What a moment. What a moment. Finally. Finally. Oh. There's the GB sticker. Everyone was frustrated by the GB sticker. Even I was. So it's great to have it off. And a nice clean overall on the back of my car. We've made it to England. Two weeks on the road. Well, one week in Monaco. And then a week on the road. It is. It has been an epic trip. This is by no means the end of the video, but I'm just saying we're in England. I'll finish off the video probably either at SB Race Engineering or just buy my car somewhere. But I just thought I'd vlog the fact that we are now in England, and I've been in England for the first time since the 11th of April. So it's good to be back. It looks grey, but not raining, which is nice. It's quite warm in here. I'm not sure whether it's going to be warm outside, but yeah, feels good. As if by magic, I've arrived back in Watford safely with my absolutely filthy R8. But a car that I've fallen in love with over the last 3,000 miles, this car has been insane. Every single car on the trip had their own pros and cons, but my car, the manual gearbox was amazing. The Quattro system that saved me lots and lots of time and the Army Tricks exhaust system as well when I was blasting through those tunnels. I was by far the loudest car on the trip and um, everyone was commenting on how good my car sounded from behind in front um, but obviously my experience of driving the car um, was second to none I've just fallen in love with this car it is an amazing amazing piece of kit let's quickly talk about the petrol consumption from my Cologne to Watford trip I now have 70 miles I think in my tank but I arrived back in London with 150 as you can see as you can see here oh, I've got 65 miles now um, but just over a quarter of a tank, which technically means that I've got about 150 miles if I drive or drove conservatively. So insane fuel economy, thanks to GAD tuning. I mean, I just cannot believe the sort of performance that I was able to get out of this car, keeping up with Scuderias, Speciales, Superleggeras, um, not so much the McLarens. Um, but from this 4.2 litre car, the fuel consumption is amazing, but also the performance and my car is filthy. Look at the brake dust on these brake calipers. My car wheels aren't black, my calipers aren't green. Um, the gray is a really flat gray now, so aspect valeting. Ben, I'm coming for you because this car needs a proper clean um, to get it back to its former glory before I left Monaco. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you've really enjoyed this one hour movie and for every single road trip that I go on, I will do my best to document it as much as possible. Whatever car I'm in, whether I'm in this car or whether I'm in something Italian with a larger engine, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? But over the next few days, I'm gonna be doing some real update vlogs of me back in the UK now, telling you what's gonna be coming on the Super cars of London very very soon um, and I look forward to uh, all of your comments all of your suggestions all of your constructive criticism likes dislikes whatever you want to do I hope you guys have enjoyed this video I'm also going to be filming a running costs of this car on the Euro road trip as well so you guys get to know how much fuel I burnt um, how much money I spent in the hotels and things like that so if you want to do something similar then you get an idea of how much it costs but that is it thank you very much for watching um, really appreciate all your support and love over the last two weeks i will see you very very soon take care guys bye bye au revoir whatever you want to call it i'm uh, back in england now so bye